Welcome to this very first death diary for Imperator Rome, the upcoming grand strategy game from Paradox Interactive. And this is, in fact, like I mentioned, the very first one that we're going to be talking about. It's going to be relatively short because we have a couple of things that we need to talk about. And it's basically the general vision of the game and some of the ideas around the map. Now, I've discussed in the past already... Um, some of the initial things regarding the map and that it's a globe and etc but that's kind of not really what we're going to be talking about today it's more to illustrate the fact that we're going to talk maybe a little bit about the globe at the end of the, end, at the, end of the video so let's uh let's see what johan had to, to give for us it's dev diary number one the 28th of may 2018 it does not have a title and well um let's kick it off uh, today we're going to be talking about the vision of the game. And apparently the first game we have made, uh, where a post from a forum member is quoted on the top of our game design. So basically, there was a thread on the Paradox forums back in 2015, of all places, where basically somebody said, what does my perfect Rome game look like? And apparently this particular quote has kind of been the core sentiment for what is, well, Imperator Rome, and that is, and this is verbatim, the balance between Crusader Kings 2 and European Amazonas 4 slash Victoria 2 should remain in Rome 2. Rome was a fantastic mix between Crusader Kings 1, character-wise, European Amazonas 3, Diplomacy and War, and Victoria, Parties, Province Systems, and Population Dynamics, and its own features like Barbaric Migration and some of the best Civil War systems in a Paradox game. And once again, this was uh, posted by Leon Aditsu back in 2015. A very interesting idea that a, a quote like this uh, bears so much on the actual design of the game, or at least the one of the cornerstones of the, the game design theory here. So yeah, uh, another note that this person also said, um, the features that a Rome 2 should take from other Paradox games, character development from Crusader Kings 2, diplomacy and trade of Europa and Zalus 4, populations and goods from Victoria 2, uh, techno technological development from Hearts of Iron 4, March of the Eagles military system, and the Civil War slave system and Republic system from Rome 1. And apparently we needed more of Eurasia, more nations in Europe and a better trade system, a real Roman Republic. And apparently this is pretty much what we are going to get. However, uh, Johan has mentioned that a couple things are not going to be in uh, Imperator Rome. There are going to be no envoy characters and apparently because apparently a lot of people were using it to get rid of people so kind of similar in crusader kings 2 where you have a counselor uh that was definitely a thing there as well uh omens and religious prestige is apparently not very fun and has been changed not mentioned whether or not it has been removed or not and trade was apparently a lot of micromanagement and this is being reworked for a far more interesting and fun mechanic uh definitely trade is something that i am particularly keen on because uh, trade is always good fun in these sort of games now like i mentioned a vision from before we wanted to stay true to this vision while implementing the knowledge that we've learned in the last decade of making games with better ux and player agency as in ux uh that's like things like uh, ui and uh anything that involves the interface and uh in addition uh, they want to make this the ultimate grand strategy game and that right there well let's put it this way once Death Diary 50 comes around, or 60, or whenever launch is, we're going to come back to this and see whether or not we agree on the idea of this being the ultimate grand strategy game. And finally, here's a little look at Iberia. Now, Iberia by itself looks kind of interesting, to be honest. There's a lot of Carthage, but what is actually very interesting, to me at least, if we if you look away from Hispania or Iberia, and go back towards the Italian peninsula, A, we have a boy, 
but also in uh, 450, not only are the Etruscans still here, which is totally understandable, uh, the Sabines are still here as well, and that right there uh, is generally a good indication of where things go. Uh, Sabines obviously being relatively legendary under uh, at least Roman mythology. Not so much mythology, obviously, it, it did happen in a certain way, and um, whether or not things happened in the way they said it happened is a little bit so-so, but um, there are probably certain subjects that the guys from Paradox don't want to touch, some of which uh, do involve the Sabines, and I highly recommend for you to go and uh, read an article or two about that, because A, it's fascinating, and B, I have no idea how they're going to put that in the game. Apparently next week we're going to be taking a look at the map a little bit deeper, the cities and provinces of the Empire and all the other nations around it. Thanks so much for watching. This was the very first dev diary for Imperator Rome. And, uh, well, stick around. Give it a subscribe. Give it a like. Hey, maybe you didn't like it. There's a dislike button there as well. So, yeah, we're going to be doing this every single week, every single Monday. We're going to have a dev diary about Rome, or at least Imperator. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, take good care of yourselves, as always, each other.